All right, well, welcome to another edition of AWSP TV. We are so thrilled today to have Jill Patnode, who is the Thriving Schools Program Manager for Kaiser Permanente in Washington. So we're thrilled to have them. Uh, they're a wellness partner with us, and we'll talk more about the Well Summit that's coming up in a few weeks. Uh, their CEO will be speaking at that, and so we'll talk more about that for sure. But we have lots to talk about with Jill. Thanks yes. for being here. Thank you for inviting me. Yeah, yeah. and we will start with, um, just tell us a little bit about your background and what is Thriving Schools? Absolutely, so um, you know, I am relatively new to Kaiser Permanente, okay. believe it or not, I've been here about a year and a half. And prior to coming here, I was with the Puget Sound ESD, so I worked 15 years working all things um, dropout prevention, all things um, social-emotional learning, keeping kids in school, um, and that stemmed from my work with juvenile justice, which was, you know, the decade or so before, before that, right. and so, okay. So lots of work in the systems that mm -hmm. work with students. Mm -hmm. And so when this position came up, I was actually very intrigued. I'm like, what does Kaiser Permanente have to do with schools because they're healthcare? Right, right, right. <laughs> and, yeah. and I had yeah. that wonder. <laughs> and so when I got into the position, what I, what I loved about the position was it, it advertised as a statewide. So it was going to have a statewide mm -hmm. impact on schools. And so when I, got, when I got to the position and I was kind of trained up, I started learning about what this thriving schools mm -hmm. is. And so what I learned is that Kaiser Permanente has been involved with schools for like 35 years, for a long time. And back in 2013, they said, you know what, we need to do uh, a deep commitment to schools. And so we're going to start a thriving schools program. And it stemmed from all the work they've been doing and, and understanding that um, the young people and the staff and that we have um, members, they're all of our members, the young people and the staff, and we have about one in five members in school at any given time. Okay. And so mm -hmm. in order, and now we can treat them and, and do great work with them and meet them in our clinics, but they always go back to the schools. And schools are such a great place for um, building good habits and starting um, building new skills. And so what Thriving Schools is about is taking a look at all of those skill sets. How do we support safe and supportive climates? How do, what, what are the tools and resources we can bring that support um, schools, students, and staff? That is great, I love that. So tell me more about how, how is Thriving Schools really uh, focused in on staff well-being? Yeah, so often in, in all my work, even with the Puget Sound mm -hmm. ESD, when we start talking about students, mm -hmm. we're talking, or, or, or school safety, we're really focusing on the students and right. the student well-being. And so you get to that, that magical number that we're trying to get over the top, that graduate, that 20% mm -hmm. we just want to get to yep. graduate, right? Yep. And I, you know, at the ESD we've done tons of programming and trying to get that up there and schools have done some amazing things. Mm -hmm. But I really came to decide that, and share, and Kaiser shares this, is that mm -hmm. it's really the staff. If we can have, it's that connection with that staff person and if that staff person is healthy mm -hmm. and well, mm -hmm then they're going to be, able to be in a better position to help that young person. That's what I think it's going to take for us to get that final 20% is honestly to get our staff um, treating the total health of our staff, oh, their that. physical health, mm -hmm. their emotional health, their mental health, mm -hmm. and getting them in a place where the students um, can come to them and they can respond to the students, right. um, not in a place of a traumatized brain or vicarious trauma brain, but really in a place of calm yeah. and mindful. That's brain. lovely, good. Well, what do we know then? How? What are ways that we can work to alleviate that teacher and that staff adult stress that, mm -hmm. that it's out there yes. so that we can then help kids? Yeah. You know, the first thing to do is to actually, before you even do anything, you need to recognize it. You have to be able to label. You mm -hmm. have to be able to identify what it is that you're feeling. So helping staff understand um, what their experience around burnout is, vicarious mm -hmm. trauma, that it's actually a uh, uh, unnatural, natural piece, right? We don't want them to experience it, but when you're you're in a position where you've got high job demand and you're in a position where you have um, low resources, mm -hmm. right? Um, and, you're, and you need to have some skills set up. When you have those things happening, then you're gonna have the bur staff burnout. And staff burnout is detrimental to students. Mm -hmm. It's detrimental to the staff. It's a lot of time and energy for principals, administrators, yeah. yep. to train staff mm -hmm. up. It's also really hard on the young people if they have a staff person or their teacher is burned out or there's a lot of turnover and substitutes that are happening because right. they're, they're, they're chronic absenteeism yeah, with staff. Yeah. And so, so really what we see is that we, we need to do that self-care and it's mm -hmm. really for the benefit when we have staff doing well and feeling well, then the whole school is yeah. really gonna benefit from that. That's lovely, good. So what specifically could administrators, principals do to help 
to help their own staff. Yeah. And we'll talk about principal stress in a minute too, but yes, what, how so can real. they help their staff? Because mm -hmm. that's what principals want to do mm -hmm. is help their Yeah. I think talking again back to a little bit is, is just getting those getting that knowledge, giving staff opportunities to recognize what it is that they're feeling around mm -hmm. Uh, around their own um, self-care. Are they feeling burned out? Are they feeling tired? Are they, what does that look like? Having them do some exploration and reflection on what does it look like when you actually are feeling a little bit burned out, when you're feeling a little bit tired? When do you know that too much mm -hmm. stress is really actually making a, that, that's really yeah. harming you? And so, and harming your performance. Mm -hmm. And so I would say, first giving them that opportunity, and then I would say it takes no more than five minutes in a staff meeting mm -hmm. to have, to talk about self-care. We just did that today in a staff meeting that mm -hmm. I had, and we just mm -hmm. said, do, we just went around, and what would you do for self-care mm -hmm. yesterday? And just asking that, creating a, a norm mm -hmm. in your school climate that we're gonna talk about self-care and it's important right. um, is really critical. And then looking too at your policies and your practices, okay. and that's the bigger yeah. work yeah. too. Is like what what is your sick leave practice? Mm -hmm. If if someone does need, uh, is feeling burned out and mm -hmm. needs a day a break, um, what does that look like yeah. for them? Is are they stigmatized for taking care of their own mental health? Mm -hmm. Right. So what does your culture look at? And then do you have what are you putting in your staff wellness policy mm -hmm. or your student wellness policy? And and then this is going to lead I think into the next <laughs> question, right? But what are you as administrators mm -hmm. modeling, mm -hmm. right? Right. Um, because you're modeling things to, to the staff. Mm -hmm. And then if we have staff that are burned out, they're modeling things to the students. So if we're really trying to build a really good social emotional well-being of our students and really give them these strong skills, what are they learning when our staff are totally burned out and are working 12-hour days, grading papers till late at night, you know, not feeling like they can even run to the bathroom right, right on their break. So, so thinking about yeah. how are we modeling for the young mm -hmm. people who's our ultimate goal, but yeah with these things. Yeah, yeah. with the adults. Yeah, yeah. We, we know from our surveys that principals uh, experience a lot of stress, significant stress. Mm -hmm. It affects their sleep, it affects their relationships. Um, they're taking care, I mean, they're the ones putting their oxygen mask on first mm -hmm. and trying to take care of others. So what are some tips um, that you could give specifically to principals, those that are leading yeah. their schools uh, about managing mm -hmm. their stress but and practicing good self-care. Yeah, I like to use the acronym that we have called ah, self-care mm -hmm. for this, and I really think that we need our principals have got to do this first and they have to model it. So S is for sleep, so it's getting your eight to 10 hours of sleep. If you can make that happen, that's what's going to work best. E is for exercise, so getting mm. your exercise every day is really important. Mm. Um, L is for love and laughter. F is for food, eating those healthy foods. So trying, you know, one of the things you can do is get rid of the junk food and the snacks in the staff room. There are some amazing snacks that we can do that are healthy and keep them in the snack room. C is for compassion. So how can we be compassionate? Um, a is for awe and wonder. That's my favorite one. So getting out in the in the woods, getting out in nature and appreciating that. R is for resilient. It's just doing things that are going to build your own resiliency. And E is for engagement. So and that is about um, really loving what you do. It's more than just being engaged in the moment. Mm -hmm. It's really about are you doing what you love to do? And so and so Having our principals and administrators mm -hmm. practice that self-care mm -hmm. and model that self-care and provide opportunities in your staff meetings, in your one-to-ones with your staff, as you're doing observations, I think would be one of the most amazing things. Mm -hmm. um, so taking time to acknowledge, like this is, we've got to pay attention to this first and then we can get on to some other business. Ex but that will yeah. pay off probably yeah. in spades by doing that. Yeah. Good. Well, those are that's a good little tip there. I know that Kaiser Permanente has lots of um, tools and resources, um, and they offer one at no cost to schools called the Rise Initiative. So yeah. What, tell us more Tussles. about yeah. that. Yeah. So yeah. we are really excited. We're, we are launching Rise. It's 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 brand new. Okay. And so um, it's going to be launched nationally. And what it is it is a. Uh, it is our coordinated approach and our coordinated response to mitigate adverse childhood experiences. And so it really takes a look at the, um, the what, what does it take to have a safe and supportive climate, right? What does it take to, what are the interventions that we need? Again, the tier one, tier two, tier three interventions that we need for our young people. And then what I love about it is it layers on self-care for staff. It layers okay. on staff well-being, which, which to me is entirely, mm -hmm. what makes it, separates it from many of the other 
oh, school climate assessments mm -hmm. that we've seen okay. out there. That this one is really focused on resiliency. Um, it's built off of evidence-based practices. We know through the pilots that have been done already that we have seen decreased staff burnout, we have seen less turnover, and we have also seen like reduced uh, discipline for oh, young people. So, yes. so this tool is going to be online and it's going to be free. It's an assessment. It's about a 46 question okay. assessment tool that's online. Um, there's and the different staff takes the assessment. That you would do. You would probably want to have an administrator, a team, mm -hmm. like a your leadership okay. team okay. would probably do this. Okay, got it. Uh huh. Okay. And you would have the team do this, and then based on that, then when you you know you'll, you're going to do great in some areas, okay. and you're probably going to flag in other areas. Okay. And what you do then is on the back side, there's a lot of resources that you'll be able to then access okay. to do. And so we're excited to be launching this, Great. Um, the RISE resource. And again, there'll be some online modules okay. around social emotional learning. There'll okay. be some way to well-being pieces. Yeah. Good. So. Well, we'll look forward to hearing more about that mm -hmm. and getting out some of those resources to our members. So Yeah, that they, is, I did include some information yeah, about that. Okay, so. so at the end of this, we will put up some links to more mm -hmm. more information coming. Good. Um, I know that Kaiser Permanente has done, you know, really made a significant investment to support schools in Washington, and it's yeah. interesting to hear it's been happening for, you know, 30, over mm -hmm. 30 years, 35 years. So what are any of the other investments in our yeah. schools that you want to talk exactly. about? Exactly. Yeah, we have been doing... Um, some really exciting work, mm -hmm. honestly, I love it. So we've been doing a lot of work around access to care and mental health. So mm -hmm. how do we support, because we recognize if, it, if young people are going to spend, and a staff, right, mm -hmm. that are in schools, going to spend six to eight hours a day, staff probably more, yeah, yeah, right? Yeah. But the students, six to eight hours a day mm -hmm. in school, that we need to be bringing, um, we need to be bringing services to the school. Mm -hmm. We need to be helping uh, attend to their physical, social, emotional, and mental health well-being in the schools. And so what we've been doing is we've just released, we well, we just awarded, um, we have multi-tiered systems of support grants. So we okay. have uh, we have districts that we have awarded that grant to. So we'll be doing it, and it's a long-term three-year grant. Okay. So we'll be doing some to work. To help them implement To help MTSS. them build, okay. build MTSS and framework. framework. Okay. Mm -hmm. Good. And then mm -hmm. we also have been doing quite a bit of investments around school-based health centers as oh, well, right. because we okay. also see that that's a place where, you, where young people can come and they might come in for a physical mm -hmm. ailment mm -hmm. and they may find out that they're depressed or there's something with their mental yeah. health that we can support. So we're doing a lot of support right. around school-based health centers and I would say multi-tiered systems of support. And then of course we have the Way to Wellbeing workshop series. So okay. because we, we really feel again that staff, we have to focus in on staff and they deserve mm -hmm. that, yep. their own um, approach. And so we have a Way to Wellbeing workshop okay. series. We launched it last year and then we're getting ready to make some announcements as far as what it will look like this year Good. so we'll be launching it very right. soon this and year. and those are no cost to no staff, cost right yeah. okay mm -hmm. great and what are some of the topics in those the way so to we're well being be that taking, you've had yeah we're okay. going to be taking a look at again the traditional self-care like okay. what are you doing like even goal setting sometimes okay. we don't even like how do you hold yourself accountable what is the goal setting around that mm -hmm. But we're also going to take a look at some of the collective approaches. Mm -hmm. So as a staff team, what mm -hmm. is healthy for you to do out there yeah. as yeah. a staff team? One of the things we've been doing some investments in is staff room makeovers. So we've oh, got okay. we've got probably, right. I think, about 10 to 15 grants out oh, there, right. small yeah. grants out there yeah. right now to make over staff rooms. Yeah. Because that is a place where staff, we want staff to be able to go there and relax. What mm -hmm. we don't want them to do is to have the coffee machine, you know, the coffee machine in there oh, right. and people at a hallway mm -hmm. and you know, all kinds mm -hmm. of things. But this should be a place where staff can really go have adult conversations nice. and yeah. relax. Um, with no junk food, is that with, right? With yeah. no junk okay, food, no yes, junk food. preferably okay. no right. junk food would be, would <laughs> Healthy be good. Healthy snacks, uh-huh. Yeah. So, yeah. Good, yeah. good. Um, and then, I don't know if you want to mention, we are planning a f series of um, workshops, physician workshops, That's if we right. want to just give a teaser now to yeah. say we're planning more videos that... We are. We are planning. We are planning in the process right now to plan some more videos to bring some of our physicians out to okay. talk to schools mm -hmm. about just some of the important topics that, that crisscross. Okay. There's so much uh, overlap in, in, between education and healthcare when it comes to the ultimate outcome. We want young people to be healthy, but if they're not healthy, they can't learn. And so there are a lot of young people that are in our schools yeah. Um, yeah. with mental health needs mm -hmm. and so forth. So, and, and sometimes our staff, we don't train the staff right. up on this. When we go to our certification programs, mm -hmm. we don't always get to hear a lot about right. some of these topics. Well, what so. I'm hearing is students want to talk about mental health. They're talking about it with their peers. Mm -hmm. um, adults 
sometimes feel comfortable talking about it, but they also want more information. So I think yeah. in addition to helping adults take care of themselves, it's arming the adults with information so they do feel comfortable mm -hmm. talking about it, whether it's in classrooms or after classrooms or you know mm -hmm. after class time or whatever it is as they're taking care of kids, yeah. they need more information and want more information too. Mm -hmm. So everybody's wanting more information, exactly. the kids and the adults. Oh yeah, so, yeah. And we, we also have an educational theater program, okay. which, which does, um, it brings a fun way to have to have discussions around mental health stigma. Oh, interesting. Fun yeah. ways to talk about, uh, I don't know if, yeah, conflict resolution. Mm -hmm. Just a different way for young people to kind of experience some of these topics so right. it's not just to sit and get and maybe mm -hmm. just role play, but they're actually getting to take on a new character. Oh, great. And practice. And is things. that for every age or is that a certain we age? We have group? that right now. We have that mostly for the secondary oh, okay. students. Okay. Uh -huh. And then we have the Rise Up workshop, which okay. is going to be a workshop and that one we are launching that one this year so we're very limited in production with this okay. year but we are very yeah, excited good. about that one because it is for staff oh, great. and it's okay. really all about shifting that mindset mm -hmm. to more of a trauma-informed lens great. and a resiliency lens so good. so more to come you guys on have that. lots of good information yeah. yeah and we will post a lot of this at the end of our of uh -huh. this talk show so people can see and put out some more articles and things on our website um, what else is there anything I mean how can administrators principals learn more what else do we need to know yeah about? so you'll be able to well, so I gave you some information to post yep. so I think that would yep. be great and I would yeah I would just start looking at some of those websites I know that there's just so much happening right now it's particularly in the area of MTSS and mm -hmm. there's a ton happening um, I'm excited to hear the work that's happening at the state level yep. around mental health yep. in schools so and how to support that right. so there is just a lot happening Good. and you know, I think the key message is just to be sure that they're taking care of themselves. Yes. Because when right. they're healthy, the staff are going to be healthy. Mm -hmm. And when the staff are healthy, the students are going to be healthy. That is a and great so, mindset. Yeah. And yeah. what I what I do see and what, what I love is just this intersection and obviously this interest of a company like Kaiser Permanente to say we want to partner with schools and we want to help you and interact mm -hmm. and share our information. Right. Um, and you're starting with staff and focusing yeah. on staff. So that is... Yeah, I it's mean, really these great. are this is our future. Mm -hmm. These are mm -hmm. our young people, and yeah. so there's a, a responsibility for everybody yeah. to take care of them, and so we want to work with the schools and great. districts. Great, good. So. All right, thank yeah. you. Any last words? Any, no, anything I think great? that's it. Thank oh, you so much. So I'm looking forward to being welcome. Yeah. your healthcare yes. champion. We, we are, are very so excited. We are so thrilled to have you as a wellness partner. Yes. So just a, um, a little plug again, if you would like to hear more um, from the Kaiser Permanente president, Susan Mullaney, she'll be at our Well Summit, which is Women in Education Leading and Learning, and that is November 6th and 7th um, at the Crown Plaza in SeaTac. So we'd love to see you there. Look at our website for more information on that. Um, again, Thank you, Jill, for being here. And thank you, Kaiser Permanente, um, for your support. Looking forward to helping everyone feel safe and strong and, and uh, able to take care of those kids every day in the buildings. Yeah, thanks. I agree, thanks. Okay.